So I want you to raise your hand if you can relate to this scenario. You are planning a landscape shoot, you pack all your gear, you make the travel, you get there super early, and actually everything works out great. You've got great light, the composition is great, everything is good, and so you get your shot. And then you get home and you start editing the photo and everything's okay, but it just feels like it's missing a little something. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what that one something probably is and how to easily fix it with a simple command in Photoshop called Free Transform. Let's check it out. What's going on everyone? Brian Matias here, welcome to the video. So actually the idea for this video came up, I was editing some photos recently, and again, a few of the photos consecutively, they were great, I was happy with them overall, but they just kind of felt like they were missing something, like there wasn't so much impact. And the more that I analyzed the compositions, the more I realized it had to do with the backgrounds. They were just not very impactful compared to the rest of the scene, and I wanted to fix that. So I thought, let's, take a look at Photoshop and see if there's anything that we can do. Now, before we jump over to the desktop, let me give you a trigger warning because this requires some manipulation of the photo. And if you're the kind of photographer who's like, no, God, please, no, 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 then this video is probably not for you. But if you're okay with things like cloud replacements and stylization and that kind of stuff, then you might enjoy this video. It's actually a lot of fun and it's a simple thing, but it can pay back with dividends. So let's jump over to the desktop. I'm gonna talk about the three photos that I've got lined up for you. All right, so these are the three photos we're gonna work on. Let's just look at them really quickly. This first one here uh, is a self-portrait of me taken on Abraham Lake in Canada. And if we look quickly, it was taken with the Sony A7R Mark III. But more importantly, and specific for this video, uh, it was taken with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens at 19 millimeters. And what I want to show you is I, I had to use a wider angle lens in order to get myself in the foreground. Uh, but in the background, the problem is that because of uh, lens compression, basically uh, the focal length that you use will kind of determine your relationship between your subject and your background. So with a wider focal length, you can see that this mountain, which is actually gigantic, um, it looks kind of small, it's kind of unimpressive. And that's what kind of bummed me out about this. I mean, I was really happy with the clouds. I mean, you got beautiful color in the clouds. It's very dramatic, uh, really cool foreground here. And, um, and also just for all three of these videos, I already edited them. We're not gonna go through the editing process because I wanna really focus on this uh, free transform stuff. So again, kind of small here and just unimpressive. Uh, we go over to the next one. This is a vertical photo. And the reason why I included it is because with this photo here, uh, we're gonna be looking at the upper third uh, of the photo to kind of correct or make more interesting. Here, we've got a photo where the subject is in the lower third. Again, cool shot. This was taken at Grand Teton National Park and um, really very cool sky, very dramatic. Uh, love the color gradient uh, from the top to the bottom. And the this little kind of abandoned barn and house here, you know, it's just kind of, it's okay. And it was taken with a Sony A9 and the Sony 70 to 200 millimeter lens at 186 millimeters. So I included this one also to show you that this kind of thing can even happen if you're using a longer focal length. Uh, sometimes it's just not long enough and you're not getting the compression that you want. So, you know, you wanna kind of make the barn here a little bit more, I don't know, have presence in the photo. And I think that's the best way to summarize it is that we wanna have presence uh, in the photo. And then finally, another photo from Grand Teton National Park. And again, these mountains, they're actually really, really big. Uh, they're, they're, they're looming, they're impressive, and they're just something to see. But because I took this with an A7R Mark II and the 24 to 70 millimeter lens at 24, so the widest focal length, they just kind of look like they're way far into the background, into the distance, and they just look small. And that's kind of a bummer. Uh, I want them to look like they're looming over the road, like you know, you're driving into this giant mountain range. So with that, let's go back to grid view. And what I already did was I just selected all three photos, I right clicked, I went to edit in, and I opened all three of them as smart objects in Photoshop, just so that if there's anything that we do to the layer, which we probably won't, but in case we do, I can always go back and re-edit it. So let's jump over to Photoshop. And you can see I've got the three photos. Here's the first one, then the second one, and the third one. Now, if we look at the layer really quickly, just to give you a quick primer on smart objects, on the lower right, 
uh, corner of the thumbnail, you'll see a little icon there and that indicates that it's a smart object. So anything you do to this layer, uh, you can go ahead in the future, if you add say a camera raw filter or any other filter, you can go back and re-edit it. All right, so the whole name of the game here in this video is to be able to take some sort of object in the background or maybe in the foreground that's on its own plane and adjust it so that it looks larger than it is. And it's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to go with three different examples to give you one repetition so you keep learning, you see what I'm doing and it makes more sense. But two, I also wanna show you some different examples uh, using a variety of subjects and scenes and show you uh, the different ways that you can apply it. So. The first thing we're going to want to do is make a selection around the area that we want to transform. Now, there are a few ways you can do that. You can take the lasso tool from the toolbar over here and just kind of, you know, make a selection freehand. I'm using a trackpad um, and this is OK. It's not nearly as precise as I want to be. Uh, you can also deselect. And if you have a, uh, you know, a Wacom tablet, that helps as well with the lasso tool. You get a little bit more control over uh, your selection. But here, all we really need is the marquee tool, uh, which is right over here, the rectangular marquee tool. Um, and we're just gonna make a rectangular selection. I'm gonna go ahead, now here's what I'm looking for, is if we zoom in, um, I want to kind of get my selection to have as much of this kind of busy pattern with the trees. See how the trees are kind of going almost along the entire horizon? So. That's what I want my selection to be. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll start here because this part of the uh, background is a little bit higher than this part. Uh, so I'll go and I'll just go across just like that and just a little bit above. Now, you can go ahead and free transform this right now uh, on this layer, but for me, I prefer to have um, this selection on its own layer. So to do that, I'm just gonna press Command or Control J, Command J on a Mac, Control J on Windows. And you can see that um, there's that selection on its own layer. Uh, if I turn it on or off, it's it doesn't do anything because we didn't make any changes. Now, there's something that I didn't do yet and I didn't do it purposely because I wanna show you what happens if you don't do this first. So let's go ahead, we'll go to Edit, and then free transform, which is command T or control T on Windows. Going forward, I'm just gonna use the uh, keyboard shortcuts. But in case you wanna know, it's under edit and it's right there, free transform. Um, and so here is our selection. And what I can do is if I just drag up from the middle, I can start enlarging that. Now, here's the problem. Let's commit that transform. And you can see how uh, that selection has a hard edge. Um, because there's no feather. So obviously this is not good. This is, I mean, we're, we're, it's over before it even started. So this is what you need to do to alleviate that. Go ahead, let's delete that layer over here. And just like before, we'll go to the marquee tool. Let's make that selection again, drag it over and just a little bit above. And now what I'm gonna do is go to the select menu and then we're gonna go to modify and then feather. Now, depending on your selection, what you've got above and below, this feather radius value will vary. I find that anything between 20 and 30 pixels usually is nice. So in this case, I'll go with 20 pixels. I'll click OK. And so what happened now is that you can't really see it. You'll see it in a second, but um, I have that selection. Um, but the, uh, the selection itself was feathered above and below and left and right by 20 pixels. So it has a nice, smooth transition. Just like before, let's go and press Command or Control J to create a new layer with that selection. Now check this out. Let's go and press Command or Control T for that free transform. And let's go ahead and expand our selection. And so just quickly, let's commit that. And you can see now, because we have that 20 pixel feather, you can't even see the seam. But this is not, we're not done. You can see right away if we turn toggle that layer, it does already look impactful. It looks like the mountain is larger. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds here where I used a wide angle lens to get myself in the foreground, but we're able to use Photoshop trickery to uh, make the background look a little bit larger. So again, let's go to that transform selection. And the other thing that I want to do is I actually want to make the mountain a little bit taller. So to do that, if I press and hold the shift key, um, while dragging up, it's gonna disable the kind of force uh, proportions option when you actually start to enlarge or decrease your selection. I normally have that on, I like it. Every time I resize something, I want it to be resized proportionally. But if you want to kind of disable that temporarily, 
press and hold the shift key and I'm gonna drag up. And just to show you, let me undo that. If I just drag up like before, you see how it's uh, adjusting proportionally. But if I press and hold the shift key, it'll go up um, and so it'll make the mount a little taller. I can also drag it uh, pressing and holding the shift key and going to the left and right to adjust the width. And then let's just go ahead and increase that even more. So something like that. And we'll go ahead and press the check mark to commit that transform and boom, like let's just kind of turn that layer. You see how small that mountain is in the background, but now it just looks larger. And especially cause if you look at my eye line, the where I'm looking, I'm kind of looking in that direction. And so, you know, when it's tiny like that, it looks like it's so far away and it's just, it doesn't have the impact. And so fortunately I was able to fix that just by a simple free transform. Uh, and you can see that everything looks good. The selection and uh, the, the transform looks convincing. I don't see any uh, issues with a hard seam. Uh, at first glance, I wouldn't even notice that anything was changed here. So again, just really quickly showing you the, the original photo and then fixing it. All right, let's go ahead, let's change things up. And this time we're gonna go with our foreground. So before um, it was our background and it was in the upper third. Now we're working on our foreground and it's in the lower third. And as you can imagine, this is pretty much a kind of lather, rinse, repeat thing. Uh, let's go ahead, I'm gonna make my, again, select with the rectangular marquee tool. I'm gonna make my selection um, just below the structure here and then make it just above it. So something like that. And again, critical, let's go to select, modify, feather, and we'll just stick with 20 pixels here and click OK. And then let's press Command or Control J to put that selection on its own layer. And then we'll go and Command or Control T to enter the free transform. So first thing I'll do is I'll just drag up from the top and make that just larger. I'm going to move it along over here. And then just like before, I'm gonna press shift and drag up just to make this a little bit taller and also shift from the left side, make it a little bit wider, just like that. And let's click the check mark to commit that. And so if we see the before and the after, so this is without the transform, you can see how that barn and the structure just look, they look small, really small. Um, and I wanted them to have a little bit more presence. So just by making a simple transform here, uh, it looks great. And if you want to do things like, for instance, if you want to get rid of that little bit of the fence that was kind of made more prominent, again, if we disable, it's right over there. That's the bit of the fence that we've kind of enlarged. Um, what I would do is I would go ahead and make a, a new layer of the visible layers, which is kind of stamped. It's called stamped visible. To do that, uh, command option uh, shift E or control alt shift E. Uh, on Windows, and what it does is Photoshop will create a third layer of all the layers that are visible. And so here we can hide these layers if we wanted to. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and select the Spot Healing Brush tool over here and just draw on it right there, and that's gone. And there you go, it's again, pretty cool. Uh, and if we wanna just show you the original, that's the original, uh, and just with a quick transform, we were able to get the structure taking up a bit more presence in the photo. And I think that's awesome. Again, with just with the free transform tool. So now let's go to the final image here. So same principle here, you've got this uh, road that's kind of going towards the lower third of the frame and you've got the mountains in the background here, which look okay, but they're just really small. I want them to be larger. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll go to the marquee tool. Let's make our selection. So just right around here and again, across the entire horizon and just a little bit above the mountain. Let's go to select, modify, feather, and again, 20 pixels, and then command or control J to put that selection on its own layer and then command or control T to get into free transform. So here, let's zoom out. And what I'm gonna do is drag from the top left corner and I'm gonna bring that mountain way out. So somewhere like there. Um, let's commit this transform for now and review what happened. Let's zoom back in a bit. Uh, and just looking at the horizon here. So uh, first thing you can see, the selection has a little bit of, you know, not exactly the best. So let's go ahead and press V for the move tool and let's move this down. So I'm just pressing the down arrow on my keyboard until that selection looks better. So somewhere right around there. 
that looks good. I'm looking above here and the clouds look great. I don't see any seams, nothing that worries me. And looking across the entire horizon, everything looks good. So let's just really quickly um, turn that off. So you see how far those mountains look in the background. But now they just look like they're like looming. They look like they have more presence. Uh, and again, the clouds look fine. Everything looks good here. Uh, all we did was we kind of made these foreground clouds a little bit larger, but I don't mind it. But if you do want to fix the clouds, and this is kind of the final part of this tutorial, um, if you do want to recover some of that, you know, the, the original sky in this case, for example, you can actually do that. Make sure that your selection layer is selected or highlighted, and then press E for your eraser. Um, I'm just going to go with a full 100% uh, smoothing, 100% flow. I'll bring the opacity down to about 50%. And I also want to make sure that the brush hardness is zero. So we have a nice soft edge. And what you can do is just slowly just paint back some of that sky. And what you're doing is let's disable that layer. All you're doing is bringing back this part of the sky just to give it a little bit of a better blend. So just a little bit like that. You see how we're getting a bit more texture. Uh, you don't want to go too far down because you're going to start uh, masking or erasing uh, the original layer, you're going to remove the larger mountain. Um, so yeah, I mean, just really slowly get some of that information back if you want. Uh, it was fine without it, but uh, looking at it now, it looks even better. So I'm happy with that. And again, just showing you the original and then this larger version, super simple. Again, one of those little things that uh, if you think about it, and if you're able to identify what's bothering you about the photo. So in this case, again, in all these three photos, what was bothering me was either the background was looking like it was way far away or the subject within the frame just was too small. Just use Photoshop and make it a little bit better. I mean, your secret's safe with me. I'm all for it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Now it's important to note that Free Transform is not a Photoshop exclusive tool. If you use On One's products or Skylum's products or stuff by Affinity, as long as you have the ability to work with the layers, more than likely you're going to have a free transform function. And so you'll be able to do this in those apps as well. It's just a matter of making the right selection, creating a feather so that it's a smooth selection, a smooth transition, and then adjusting that selection accordingly so that it looks natural within the frame. Now, one more thing about these photos, all three of them were stylized using profiles from my Adobe Nature Tones profile pack. It's totally free. I'll drop a link in the description below. Go ahead and download it and enjoy it. And to continue your video watching journey, just click right over here for a video of more reasons why I use Photoshop over Lightroom for certain tasks. It's gonna be pretty helpful, I'm sure. All right, I'll see you on the next one.